In this video, we're going to give you an overview on what to look for during the month of October. Let's start off and take a look at the temperature anomalies and kind of fast forward into those first couple of days of October. And you can see a fairly significant trough should be diving down across the middle part of the country, bringing some cooler anomalies for that region. That should come on the backside of what we're tracking right now of a tropical system down there into the Caribbean. So currently right now, the National Hurricane Center does in fact have a 40% probability of this forming into a tropical system. Now, this is ensembles on the European guidance, and this gives you an estimate of where it likely, be, likely is gonna be over the course of the next week. You can definitely see it doesn't really move very far. In fact, it's very slow development with low pressures in and around the Yucatan and the GFS ensembles is kind of implying the same thing, maybe just a little bit faster, but nonetheless, between now and next Friday, it still puts a lot of low pressure down there in towards the Yucatan, extending further north. And I think eventually we'll likely shift further northeast going into next weekend. But next week is going to be a warm week. We got a very warm pacific jet and typically that's more of a, a zonal flow that comes off the pacific so we are expecting above if not almost well above average temperatures across a good part of the west and those extend even into the pretty much almost all the entire lower 48 and overall it's going to be a drier week across a good part of the west with that zonal flow that's coming on off the pacific most of the action is going to be down there into the caribbean as well as into the gulf of mexico so a lot of guidance puts the heaviest precipitation into louisiana heading into the southeast back through the tennessee valley extending up the east coast the heaviest precipitation would likely be into florida especially the florida panhandle down there into alabama as well as into georgia into the carolinas and most ensembles is implying the same thing so most guidance has this continuing to slowly develop down there into the Gulf, extending further and north into the Gulf and likely continue lift northeast. So by the time we get into that October 1st timeframe, we should have heavier precipitation extending through Louisiana back into especially along the coastal regions. And that would likely extend further north and northeast getting into areas of the Tennessee Valley through areas of the East Coast as well with heavier precipitation, if not flooding rains. But so as we head into October, here is an overview. So we are looking at a more of a transitional month. So you're going out of summer, you're heading into fall, and typically when you get those clash in temperatures, you likely have a ramp up as far as severe storms and so these are the most probability areas to look for if you're going to have severe weather during the month of October through a good part of the central U.S. as well as the south central U.S. getting into the southeast and up the east coast as well, extending as far north as Iowa and even getting into Illinois, Indiana and portions of Wisconsin even. So if we extend it and head through, you know, parts of the month of October. You can see on some of the ensembles, look at the, looking at some of the teleconnections on what may lie ahead. Uh, well, you can see it's been, you know, for the first last half of September, maybe the first week of October, it's gonna be fairly on the warmer side, even when we do have that cooler shot on the back side of that tropical system. But overall, as we head through that second, third, and likely the fourth week of October, we are seeing a downturn on some of the uh, teleconnections on the overall EPO guidance going negative. So that'll be a, an indication where we're gonna start to see these cool fronts come down and shift further south. You can see it doesn't go that far negative. So I don't expect these cold fronts to, to drift all the way down into the deep south. And if they do, they will likely modify big time uh, but nonetheless, the northern tiers does favor, especially in the second half of October, more cold shots coming in out of Canada. So this is what it's going to look like going into that September 28th timeframe. If we kind of take you back, a lot of guidances puts it 
this this uh, tr this area of low pressure will likely be our tropical system by then. Either Helene or Isaac will go into the southeast. You can see predominantly we got the ridge over the top. This is what's going to help lower the pressures underneath. But you can see the the formation of that trough that will likely be on the backside. So as this moves out and out into the east coast, dumping that heavier rain, we'll have that trough come in on the backside, and so that should push a, a pretty good a shot of cooler air on the backside across a good part of the central and eastern two-thirds as well as into the ohio valley getting into the mid-atlantic and portions of the northeast it's likely going to be a quick shot of air for a couple of days heading into those first couple of days of October. And this is where you would likely look for more tropical activity during the month of October. Yes, the jet stream continues to amplify and get stronger as that west east flow. So if they do come to fruition, this is where they would typically come to fruition, this blue shaded area, as well as into the in the green shaded area. And this is exactly where we do have our late season storm in the month of September likely coming to fruition as well as well. We'll look at this region as well because we do even have several systems that are likely going to be forming into tropical systems out here. But nonetheless, most of the guidances puts, if it does make landfall into the U.S., the most favored, favored areas are likely from New Orleans all the way up to Virginia Beach during the month of October. So that is definitely something to look out for. But as we head into that second week of October, yes, we'll have that cooler push to start the month. But then again, it's going to be a quick push of cooler air, and I think you'll return return to more of a, a zonal flow during that second week of October and be predominantly mostly on the warmer side for the good part of the lower 48. But you can see that transition as that, that EPO does turn predominantly a little bit more negative during that second half of October. We're going to start to see some cooler anomalies come down from British Columbia as well as into Alaska and dive into those areas across the Pacific Northwest. And as we do that, we're going to start to get a little bit more active as we transition into more of a La Nina type setup. So I do feel heading into that second week of October, we're still going to be on the rainy side, predominantly across the southeast and a good part of Florida. And then the Pacific Northwest is also going to start turning wet, definitely turning on the wet side. And then the, unfortunately, the La Nina is even going to get stronger and that should put below average precipitation across a good part of the desert southwest, uh, much of the central U.S. and the northern U.S. as well during that second part, that second week of October. But as we transition into that third week of October, you can definitely see a little bit stronger push of cooler air that will be coming in out of Alaska into British Columbia and diving into the northern tier of the US. So definitely along with the rain should cool off big time across the Pacific Northwest and the northern northern tier, southern Canada there across the Dakotas through Minnesota as well as into Wisconsin, portions of the Ohio Valley as well as into the Mid-Atlantic and as into the Northeast while continued with the La Nina type setup continuing, those above average precipitations will likely continue for a good part of the desert Southwest as well. But the La Nina is coming on alive and strong. It did get delayed a little bit, but over the last couple of weeks, it is definitely coming to a fruition. There is no doubt about that. And it continues to drop into that La Nina type phase. So yes, uh, we are expecting to, you know, to be finally coming out of that La Nina watch and basically be into La Nina territory the, for the rest of fall and for the rest of the winter months of what lies ahead. And so as what lies ahead during the month of October with the more active uh, you know, La Nina that's coming to fruition, we're going to watch the drought, unfortunately, start to deepen across a good part of this region, the central U.S., the southern plains, as well as into the southwest, while much of the Pacific Northwest is going to start to turn a lot wetter, especially as we get through the month of October. We'll have equal chances of above and below average precipitation across the northern tier with the more successful cool shots of air that will be coming in. 
and of course the east coast with predominantly tropical systems to start the month and likely possibly another one towards uh, the, the second or second week of October across the eastern seaboard will put the most of the east coast on the well above average precipitation for a good part of October, essentially from Louisiana extending all the way to the southeast, especially into Florida, and much of the east coast heading up into New England as well as into uh, Maine. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button, and catch my next update. Wire protect you before and after the storm.